Hi, readers. Welcome back to Kate DiCamillo and the Puppets of Spellhorst. I was thinking about it and I hadn't talked enough about what a great, that this is a chapter book. I know that you know that because you've been following along, but as you're telling your family and friends about it, uh, it is a chapter book and it is not a younger level chapter book. It has some amazing vocabulary words. I'm reading it to a third grade class, but I would definitely say it has fourth and fifth grade vocabulary in it. So I'm going to look that up for next time and let you know what exact level it is. All right. So just so we can go over that yesterday we finished chapter seven and it led us to the end. Let's look back. Oh, no, excuse me. Yesterday we finished chapter eight. Now we were right here when it ended with the puppets. So then it moved on to act two. So it's like one scene is done, the act is done, and now we're moving on to act two, chapter nine. Now this is an interesting chapter and a chapter that brought up a lot of emotion when I read it. So I want you to think about how you feel at the end of this chapter or in actually in the middle of it. It was early in the morning and still dark when Martha came out in her nightgown and studied the puppets. She stood on her tiptoes and reached for the wolf. In doing so, she knocked the owl over and jostled the king so that his crown was crooked. You, said Martha to the wolf. Now the chase begins, thought the wolf. Now I will become myself. Martha took the wolf to another room. She sat down to the floor and held the wolf up close, inspecting her. Remember, we have learned that the wolf is a her. You could kill someone with those teeth, said Martha. Yes, thought the wolf, exactly. I'm going to get rid of them, said Martha. <gasps> the wolf felt lightheaded. Had she misunderstood the child? She had not. Martha immediately set to work using a pair of pliers. So pliers are like a pair of scissors, but they come apart and they're solid, thick, flat on the end, and you can pull things out with them. If like a nail gets stuck somewhere, you can pull something out. She has a pair of pliers in her hands, breathing through her mouth in terrible concentration. The girl succeeded in removing two teeth from the wolf's mouth. And the wolf felt such grief, such tremendous grief. How many teeth did she have? No one had ever said. She had never counted them. So if we're looking here at the picture on the bottom, here she is removing her teeth, the teeth that are so important to the wolf. Probably the most important thing she feels about herself. She's always saying, and I have such sharp teeth. How do you think that makes her feel having those teeth removed? But now she had two fewer teeth. That much was certain. Fortunately, after removing the second tooth, Martha lost interest in the whole enterprise and threw the wolf to the floor. The puppet lay face down, staring at the pattern on the carpet, which featured deep blue swirls, almost, but not quite, touching dark red swirls. This design, one color reaching for the other, but never quite meeting, repeated over and over again. The wolf thought that she might be staring at the pattern in the rug for the rest of her life. She did not care. Nothing matters, thought the wolf. If I do not have all of my teeth, then nothing matters. Oh my goodness. Let's talk about how she is feeling. Uh, what words would you use to describe um, besides sad? What would you say? Is she tremendously depressed? Is she devastated? What words would you use to describe how the wolf is feeling at the end of this chapter? Wow. That was chapter nine. Thank you for joining us. Please subscribe to the channel if you've not subscribed yet so that you can even click on notifications. You can hear about when I post a new chapter and give me a thumbs up. I also love comments if you'd like to leave a comment with uh, how you're feeling and what you thought of this chapter. Thanks for joining me.